What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? Today, I have a treat for you, and not so much a treat for me. As a matter of fact, everything about this is kind of wrong, but we're gonna weld a fillet weld, a three-pass fillet weld, and not clean the mill scale off the material and not clean the flux from the 7018 rods, the slag that's left on the passes, and see what the hell happens. So with that said, let's get into it. So I know that somebody out there has must have done a video on this already, so I know I'm not the first, but I gotta be honest, I've never seen a video on this topic and I didn't look one up either. So this is all gonna be new to me, I guess. And I can honestly say that I have never welded over slag that I left on a weld. It's just something you don't do. And with 7018, it's so easy to clean it off that it's kind of pointless not to uh, clean it off in the first place. But that's not the point. We're gonna basically do a three pass weld, like I said, and cut and etch it when we're done and look at what's inside. Now, if I had to make a prediction on this, I gotta honestly say I have a feeling there's gonna be a weird bead appearance. It's gonna kind of maybe track like a worm <laughs> and uh, the tie-ins aren't gonna be that good. I don't anticipate this looking like an absolute clean three-pass weld, like I didn't do anything wrong. So that's at least my prediction. You guys can make your prediction now and I guess we'll see who's right and who's wrong. And I guess this is wrong because we shouldn't be doing this, but hey, it's piss poor and rain outside and what better time to do this than now. Also, while well, I have you here, a couple guys in a previous video, also while well, I have you guys here, a couple guys in a previous video mentioned something about the red power cable that I commonly use on stingers and stuff. And I won't put a link to it because I just bought this on Amazon. So if you Google welding cable red, it should come up. But I commonly color code my welding cables, force a habit from working with longer leads. It's so much easier when you have a pile of wire to figure out what goes to where when they're color coded. Now, all of my connectors generally are gonna be color coded red or black for, or sometimes green for ground just to facilitate things being easier on me. But even on shorter ones, I don't know, force a habit, I still do that. Word of advice though, if you buy like four gauge, two gauge, one up cable, do not buy uh, speaker wire. So amp car audio amplifier wire. The reason is the jackets on that stuff uh, does not hold up to heat. This is actual welding cable. It has a jacket that will handle high heat and doesn't melt. I made the mistake once of buying uh, amplifier uh, cable and guess what? I set it down on the edge of something hot, melted through, and then I had about 200 amps welding off of the cable into the piece. So you don't want that. Buy legitimate high temperature welding cable. It's not the cheapest crap out there, but it's the way to go. And like I said, for me, it just helps keep things organized. All right, with that said, I'm gonna get this clamped up and we're gonna do a three pass weld with absolutely no cleaning and cut it and see what the hell happens. Well, I did a three pass weld and I can already tell there's quite a bit of spatter, big buckshot BBs, so that's not a good sign. The first pass went in okay. I had quite a bit of wobble to it. I've been burning up 3 16 rods at uh, work and that would be 3 16 in diameter, not uh, stainless. And when you burn those up like hard face rods that have no flex, you just get used to it. And these things, man, super flexible and difficult to control, these little 332s. Anyways, the root pass went in okay. The second pass wasn't as bad as I expected. I did give it a little bit of cool down time. Didn't seem as bad as I thought it would be. Now the third pass was exactly what I would expect, where as I was welding, it was difficult to tell what was the molten pool and what wasn't. 
the puddle was still defined, but it was almost like I was welding down in a depression in the flux. Like there just seemed to be an excess of flux. I couldn't tell how long my arc gap was for, I would say, better than two thirds of this weld. When I hit here, I kept shoving in rod and then all of a sudden the puddle tightened up and it was welding cleaner. Like there wasn't as much flux floating around. So underneath here, I would anticipate seeing maybe we have some slag inclusions. Hard to say. I mean, it doesn't look that bad here, but let me go grab a uh, chisel and a wire brush and let's start cleaning this. Well, it's better than I thought it would be, but that's not saying much. I gotta say that flux coating on the top was like a quarter inch thick. You can see some of the chunks here. I've never seen slag that thick on a, on a three pass weld. And so I guess it answers the question when you weld over it, it does remelt that slag back in the flux, but, uh, and it just floats up to the top, but still. The overall bead profile doesn't look that bad. There's undercut along the whole top toe line. I'm sure you can probably see that. Part of that may just be that I had slightly too long of a arc gap and it was just so difficult to tell what was what. And I thought I was feeding enough rod in, but I don't know, not all of that is me. I'll take 70% of it. So I guess uh, undercut's probably gonna follow with uh, not cleaning it properly. Well, let's go and cut this in half and etch it and see what's even inside of this. Well, it's a lot cleaner than I would have ever thought. There really doesn't appear to be any uh, trap slag anywhere. Now that little circle dot on the lower right bead, that's not porosity. That just wiped off so it was just debris or something, but far cleaner than I would have imagined. Now the bead spacing is quite a bit off and there's undercut on the top pass. And a lot of that probably was just because I couldn't see what was going on. So realistically better than I would have thought, but in no way, shape or form should you just do this as routine. It's gonna cost you at some point. One of the things you guys gotta remember is that I have a fair amount of time under the hood. And if you don't and you start doing this, you're probably gonna have far worse results. And like I said, under no circumstances should you make this a practice. There's no benefit in it, especially with how easy it is to clean up all of the slag on a normal pass. So don't do this. But realistically, far better than I would have thought. Now, since my camera got stolen and I don't have the rest of this footage, we'll just go to conclusion right here. So in conclusion, what did we learn today? We learned that clean between passes. If you don't clean it, you may or may not have results that are this good. And let's face it, you don't want undercut and you don't want poor bead spacing like this because, well, it's weaker than it should be. Beyond that, you should really have attention to details. So prep your plates properly, clean the mill scale off, and then clean between passes. And if the weld looks like a turd, grind it out and fix it. All right, with that said, until next time.